The final technique we're going to look at is two-point perspective. Now, two-point perspective is a technique where we, which is more natural. It, it's how the, the world is actually represented. Isometric, that's a good technique for representing or detailing objects because you can see the three sides of the, in this case, the box, nice and clearly. Two-point perspective, what you find is things get narrower. And one of the best ways to describe two-point perspective is actually to look at train tracks. For the sake of a bit of scrap paper. If I was to start by drawing uh, a drawing that looks like this. So I've got a dot just here. I'm going to sketch out. If you think what train tracks look like, if I was to draw them on here. Now, please don't copy this at home. But you can take my word for them. The train tracks look something like this. and so on and so forth. If you stood on a train track and looked down the railway line, you'll see that all the lines go to one point in a distance on the horizon. And this is known as one point perspective. Now being sensible people, we know that that can't happen. As the train's going along the train track, what you'll find is if it got narrower, the train would uh, fall off the rails, it'll de um, derail and there'll be a large crash and probably some smoke in the distance as it's happened. The train tracks actually are parallel. Um, what happens is that due to the curve of your eye and the curvature of the earth, it makes it feel like it goes back to a point there. We want to remember that as we do this next technique. Now two point perspective is like one point perspective, which we just drew on the train tracks. However, there's two points. First thing we need to do is draw a line through the center to represent this. So I'm going to turn my paper and draw a line through the centre of the box that's horizontal. And on that line I'm going to add on two points. I'm going to put across each end and these are going to be what's called vanishing points. And the vanishing points exist in real life. As far as the eye can see on the right or left of you. To help us with the drawing though we're going to squeeze these in and put them on the paper. What happens is it will make things feel a little bit more angled than it would in real life but it'll help you understand, hopefully, this technique. This line is known as two things. If you're drawing landscapes, it's known as the horizon. If you're drawing products, it'll be known as the eye level line. We focus on products mostly in CDT, so we want to remember it as the eye level line. And the eye level line is where your eyes are. So if I was looking straight forward, that line will be where I'm looking at. What we're going to do is we're going to represent three objects, three boxes, just like the first technique, making one feel small, making one feel high in the sky, and one feel large, depending on where we start to draw them in relation to the eye level line. The first box we'll do over here, we'll make it feel like it's small. I'm going to start again by drawing a vertical line. With this technique, like isometric, there's only two types of line you can draw, really. There's a vertical line, and there's one that goes to a vanishing point. So our next step, once we've drawn a vertical line, is to go to the top point on the line here and draw lines to the vanishing points. So I've got one across to this vanishing point across here, and one in this direction. Again, notice I'm turning the paper like we talked about in the first task. At the bottom of the line, we do the same again. It looks a bit like two triangles on the page. Now, in this space here, we're going to draw the box. This is going to be the front face of our box. So I'm going to draw a vertical line here to represent the front face. Just remember, you guys will want to trick you, so try and make sure that this vertical line and this vertical line goes straight up and down. And we'll do one on the side as well here to represent the side of the box. And we'll just clear line this in. Hopefully, we might start to see the front and the side of a box forming. To do the top of the box, we simply go to this point here and draw a line across to this vanishing point on this side. And from this point here, a line across to this vanishing point here. I'll just darken in slightly. You'll see we have got 
a box. And it feels a bit smaller because it's underneath the eye level line and it looks like you're looking down on it. We can do the same thing but above eye level line. So same technique, different starting point. So there's the edge of our box like before. It's above our eye level line. Same technique, we go to the top and draw a line to the cross on both sides. From the bottom, across to the vanishing point on the right and the vanishing point on the left. We can then add on the sides of the box. If we just clear line them in slightly, you'll see how they look. To finish the bottom of the box, we can then go across to this vanishing point, and this one here goes across to that vanishing point. Again, you can see the bottom of the box this time, and it feels like it's high in the sky. Last of all, let's draw a box that feels a bit bigger. This could be used for maybe constructing buildings. This time we're going to do a line that goes for above and below the eye level line. So it's my eye level line through the centre, and this line's going above and below it. It's the same technique though, so from the top I draw a line across to the vanishing point on this side, and to this side. From the bottom, we do the same. Can then add the sides on, like we've done previously. Now it's a wee bit harder to see because we have our lines on the page, but if I just darken in slightly, you'll hopefully be able to see the box. Okay, let's add some colour to this one as well. We'll do the colour from the same side, so my sun is going to be in the top corner there, shining in that direction. Again, we need to remember there's three tones of colour, and you can looking for a dark, a medium, and a light colour. This box across here. Well, the one that's going to be in shadow, furthest away from the sun, will be this side just here. I'm going to make this one like tone number five. There we are. The side closest to the sun will be the top surface in this case. Nice and light. And then the last one will be the medium one, a bit like number three. On the top box here, remember the sun's high in the sky, so the furthest away, the one in shadow in this case will be the bottom. The side I'll get most light will be this side here. And the third side will be the medium strength tone. The large box where they've only got two options, light and dark. The furthest away from the sun is this side. So this side will be in shadow. And this side here will be closest to the sun, so it's like tone number one. Nice and light. And there we have it, so an introduction to some sketching techniques that we'd use for S1 pupils. In the following video, we'll look at how to do some rendering, which means to colour. Um, thank you for watching.